Okay, you guys. God bless you. Um, I don't usually pay any attention to books, but this came up in my feed. And I'm going to do some research on this guy because he is very, very good biblical theologian. From this video, that's what I'm seeing. So that's why I like to research people. But the reason I'm recording this is because I want you to see why Jesus rent the veil was so that we could approach God ourselves in prayer. And we should be so thankful for that. But this guy gives such a vivid, accurate, colorful description of what happened before Jesus died on the cross and immediately he rent the veil in two. Before he did that, this is what would happen to people if they actually tried to come in the presence of our Father. Check this out. Two cherubim are posted there with fiery swords because Israelite readers would know that cherubim, they're only located in the Holy of Holies, overshadowing the Ark of the Covenant. And so when you move into Exodus, you see an explosion of the term kadosh, 98 times in just 40 chapters, the holy ground, the holy ark, the holy tabernacle, the holy feast, the holy vestments. You know, all of these things are holy, but leave it to me. I needed a rabbi, Rabbi Berman, to show me that in Exodus, all of these things are called holy, and Israel is called to be a holy nation. But while these things are holy, Israel is not. If you hear my voice, if you keep my covenant, then you'll be a holy nation. They don't hear the voice. Moses does. They only hear thunder. They don't keep the covenant. They worship the golden calf. And so they're desecrated. And as Rabbi Berman pointed pointed out to me, throughout the rest of the Hebrew Bible, nobody is ever divinely commended as holy. They're righteous. You know, they're upright. Uh, they're intelligent. But they're not holy because holiness is not the same thing as righteousness. Righteousness is kind of keeping the commandments, especially the last seven, the second table of the law, whereas holiness pertains to our direct relationship to the Lord God, that vertical beam, as it were, whereas the horizontal beam of the cross represents righteousness. And so righteousness is the province of the king, whereas holiness is the province of the high priest. It's in the temple. It's in the Holy of Holies. And don't you ever forget it because Isaiah points out in Isaiah 6, and I make a big thing of this in the book. You know, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the seraphim were singing, holy, holy, holy. And then suddenly Isaiah is quaking in terror. I'm, you know, woe is me. I am doomed to die. And why? Because I've got unclean lips and I live in a land that is unclean. What's he talking about? In the year that King Uzziah died. One of the most successful of the Jewish kings down in the southern kingdom of Judah. He was the 10th in the line of David. He was so successful after about 40 years of reigning, a flourishing economy, a powerful military, all kinds of success. Second Chronicles 26 describes how his pride got to him. So he took a stroll one day into the temple where the priests are. Hey, I am the, the king of righteousness. I'm going to go into the realm of holiness. And the priest tried to stop him until he continued on to offer incense. And then suddenly... There is leprosy on his forehead. The priests drag him out, and he's covered with leprosy until he dies. He's unclean because he forgot the difference between the realm of justice and the realm of sanctity, the palace and the government and the temple and the priesthood. And so this distinction was something else that I discovered in the Old Testament because in the Protestant world, we... There you go. That's what would happen. Before Jesus rent the veil, if someone tried to go into the Holy of Holies with the Levite priest and approach God themselves.